call the meeting to order now that Bob is here at 6.04. Um, well, how do you want to approach the minutes since uh, did you all get a chance to look at the February 8th minutes? Because, or should, I, should we hold them in abeyance until next month? Since I just got them and Jim, you couldn't find yours, I right? I could not find it either, no. And Bob, I don't know, do you have the February 8th minutes? Wait, the February 8th minutes? Yeah, the ones from the regular February meeting. Uh... Strange. Yeah, I just got them, Sheila. I got them. I printed them out, so I have. Well, them. that's the one I just resent to you right. only. Okay, Sheila, did you send it to me as well? Yeah, to say I didn't. I don't see. I didn't see yeah. them either. That's a, I sent it to the whole trustee board. If I uh, disappear, I'm just. Uh, I'm going to go back and split my screen and open my. All right. Okay. Um, Cindy, oh, yeah. do you know? I got no one, one on two nineteen. Oh yeah, I got them. Sorry, you're right. I do. Okay, oh, so people. <laughs> well, so they're both together. So they're the yes. minutes are together under trustee minutes. I oh, sent the correct. Okay. That's January probably. I saw ones. the January, and I didn't go any farther. So it's oh. only. It's my yeah. fault. It was okay. the amended January ones. Thank right. you. Sorry, guys. So, um, do you want to uh, vote on the uh, February eighth minutes? Does anybody have additions, omissions, corrections? Okay, then we need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion to accept the February 8th minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, so it's motioned uh, by Megan and seconded by Jim. And uh, we need a roll call vote. Bob? Yay. Megan? Accept. Sheila? Accept. Jim? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Approved. Now, has everyone one, uh, been able to access the February 22nd minutes? Yes. I not. I did you not get not. those. You didn't get those? Oh, crap. I got the email, but I couldn't, I couldn't get a file extractor to open it. Okay. I'm still, that's part of what caused me to be late to this meeting. I switched over to Mac. And so I'm still figuring out what's Mac and what's Word. And, and On occasion, too, I think, Jimmy, you had my old Comcast email. And I see it. It's being forwarded. Yeah. But it's my Gmail that I'm using. So, okay. Bob, I'll send a chat and just send my email to you if okay. that's okay. And I'll, I'll resend okay. those. I apologize in advance. Um, I'm not I'm not skilled at meeting minutes. So I did the best I could. And then when I got involved, the minutes kind of dropped off. But I yeah, I think you did a good job, Bob. There's just a couple okay, of uh, spelling errors. But how about if we hold those in abeyance until the April meeting? I so will resend. I will resend during this meeting. Okay. okay. Everybody good and on I'll that? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. And I will do what I did. Jim reached out and said I couldn't open it. So I will send it as a PDF. Yeah, that would be great. And then everybody should be able to open it and there shouldn't be any Mac versus Windows issues. Sorry. Okay. All right, so um, Cindy, did they indicate um, uh, the folks that are coming from the 250th when they would come? They said they were gonna be here. They, I told them that they were going to get to go first, but no one's here. Okay, so we'll continue with the financial report and as soon as they get there, we'll move them up so that they don't have to sit through anything else. Was okay. that okay. meeting ID sent to uh, Susan? Yes, I forwarded and, it to Susan to let her know when we were meeting and that so she- Also on the website. Would be, yes. It's always on the, on the waitly.org website. Um, whenever I post it, it goes automatically to there. Okay, so Jim, financial report. Okay, did everybody get the um, the spreadsheet that I sent? Yes. Okay. I did. All right. Um, I just wanted to point out that at this point in time, we've got three and a half months left in our fiscal year. Okay. So this is where we start to really look closely at the numbers. We're tracking pretty close to where we should be. We're a few thousand dollars off. Um, I do see some um, some savings in the in the next three and a half months. Um, I do want to let you know that. 
under maintenance, we're showing a deficit of 2,300. And I, I did that. Um, this was work on the mini split down on the, uh, for the elevator project, but it was before the contract was signed. So it was allocated to the lift project, but the town accountant would not accept that. And she wanted me to move it. Um, and I had a choice, I could move it there or I could move it to the Dickinson fund. And given the fact that we're so close to the end of the physical year, and we usually end up with a slight surplus, I thought I would just push the envelope, see where we are in the middle of June. And if we need to supplement our municipal budget, we can easily do that by transferring it out from either state aid or the municipal or the um, Dickinson fund. So it's just a, once we give up money in the trust fund, it's gone forever. Um, and I, I just thought this might be the prudent way to do it. So this happens a lot. It's not anything that has not happened in the past. So we're gonna run a deficit on the maintenance budget, but we should see some surpluses on some of the other line items. Yeah, I guess that was gonna be my question. So yeah, what I guess what does happen if there is a deficit overall at the end of the- that, Then we'll, we will supplement it with the trust fund. With the trust fund is that's yes. what we actually do. Yeah. And we have not had to do that, Megan, for several years because for some reason we always end up giving the town back two or three thousand dollars and i yeah. just don't understand why but that's usually the way it is so i just thought that we'll just push the envelope a little bit further down the road and see if we can't close that gap a little bit it's always a little crazy at the end of a fiscal year what goes in this year what goes in the next year and then anything yeah. that was billed this month in in june but we got it in july we have to allocate it back to june so there's a little bit of back and forth there. So the town accountant knows that, you know, we will just, she'd let me know and we would just supplement it with the, um, with, the with our uh, trust fund budget. Okay. But the HVAC now, company has been paid. So it's, it's not as if right. they didn't get paid. Everything so is, is more good. And we than, still have a certain amount in our budget total. So it's not like we're running a total deficit. No. Just in that line item, we are, and, and, and that could and be I, I went through each line item, and I saw so there's going to be some surpluses, minor, but there'll there'll be some. Uh, so that should that should take away from some of that twenty one hundred dollars. Okay. I have a question. Um, I think for Cindy, uh, given construction and some of the closures, do we have any leeway on that collection development? Sorry, what? On the Do collection any... development, given that we have some closures, I mean, is it written in stone now that we're going through a construction project that we absolutely have to spend that 20%? Is there any forgiveness on that? There might be a little bit. I can double check with Liz. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on her last name right now at MVLC. Yes, yeah. thank you. I can check with her and find out if there's a little bit of wiggle room with that. I just wondered, I mean, I know we're down there, but you know, that little bit would help if they're yet given that we have had closures. Thanks, Cindy, that was all. I, I wanted to direct your attention to the bottom of the page and this gets a little complicated, so I'll, I'll go through mm -hmm. it slowly. It's under lift. And you'll see the figure of 21,565. We were allocated $35,000 three years ago. I stood up at the town meeting. And at that point, um, our, we were just getting into um, the end of the architectural, the architect's proposal to us. We didn't know how much the architect was going to charge us. It was only an estimate on Margot's part. And Margot told me it's going to be about $20,000. So, you know, you know me, I went for 35 and I got it. No one objected at all. So the, we got I, 35,000 for the architectural fees. So as soon as this new fiscal year kicked in, we had used, um, we had used part of that 35,000, which left a balance of 21,565. We began July 1st with 21,565 in our, in our pocket. Since then, we've spent $4,728.49 of that. That left us $16,856.51, okay? 
Now, looking at the contract, and I talked to Aviva yesterday, her firm number was $21,000, okay? And that's, that's very good for us because this leaves us the balance to use for any cost overruns for change orders. This was the plan. I always had this plan in my head three years ago that we, I wanted to get asked more than what they needed, but we would use that for construction purposes. Now to do that, we have to repurpose that money at a, at a town meeting. And there's been a town meeting scheduled for October 23rd at 6 p.m. March, March 23rd. March 23rd. I'm not sure if it's at the town offices or the town hall. That will follow, I'll remind everybody, and you really need to show up for that. Not many people show, but I don't think there's gonna be a problem here um, to re repurpose that $14,000 to us. So just briefly, that's what I'll stand and I'll just add- Repurpose bits. it for the lift. We it's, already been, it's already been set aside for the architect, okay. architectural side for yeah. the lift project. Yeah. So the, the contract that we signed was for, and I'm gonna round these numbers up, for 145,000. We had 150 to the project. Remember, said, well, that's what we had. So there was left us $5,000 for any cost overruns. And I have not, we have not paid any of that out yet. I know it's coming, but we haven't paid it out. So we've got that 5,000 plus the 14,000, that brings us to 19,000 plus, I added an extra 5,000 at the end of this whole thing, just for deep cleaning the library once this job is completed. So we have $23,000 um, to complete our project, which I feel is more than enough. We're not, the, the, the project, the secrets are pretty much exposed in this project right now. And, and Aviva agrees with that, there shouldn't be, any more surprises. There might be a minor one here or there, but there shouldn't be any major ones. Um, so now I am just waiting for the actual, what they call the A1A, and that is the authorization to pay for a change order. And I haven't even seen a formal change order. It's just been emails back and forth. We do so have. That, I, don't, I don't have any hard evidence, but just what I've talked to the con contractor and the architect, that's where it stands. We okay. do have a construction meeting Thursday morning at 930, at yes. which time we're going to talk about those two um, uh, change orders. Yeah. And um, it should be noted that therefore on the special town meeting warrant, there are two articles for the library, one for the repurposing of the 14,000 and the other one for the additional 5,000. Um, so we've, we've tried to cover the financial bases and whatever we don't use, will go back to the town. Um, but at least now we have some degree of breathing room. And it appears, uh, we, we'll, we can talk about um, uh, construction matters when we get to um, okay. add in old business. Jim, you okay. wanna continue with your report? Yeah. The, uh, Wait, can the I ask one question just to sure. clarify? So there's 5K built in for the changeovers. And then, so you're at the town meeting, that's what we want to ask for another 5K for the cleaning. Is that we're asking? Yes, correct. Yeah. 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 It's okay. already, it's already on the warrant. One, one warrant article is for the repurposing of the architect fees. And the other one is for an additional 5,000 to cover deep cleaning. Got it. Okay. Now, I also sent you the special revenue accounts. Um, Dara, our town accountant, had a little problem with her system yesterday, um, and I didn't get the updated version until late today, and right now I'm talking to you from West Medford, Massachusetts, so I didn't get to look at it. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's changed from last month. I think it's a, it's a carbon copy of it, so um, I just wanted to point that out to you, okay? I can add that uh, in the Duda account um, before two weeks ago when the world changed in so many ways and continues to do so, um, we had already gone back up to 200 and over 205,000 in the account. Yeah. So we started with 200, went up to 270, went down to 196 and then back up to 205. And I don't know what it's done because yeah. the market's been doing some slip sliding mm -hmm. away. So, <laughs> but we've, we've, we're doing well with that. 
and and we would do well to um you know it's funny i was reluctant to take the money out uh and send it to the town um it's probably a good thing that i did at the time that i that that um, yeah, you did. brian made me do it it's accidentally was a good thing because we would have taken more loss on principle if we hadn't mm-hmm. taken it out at that time yeah. so they say you can uh, never time the markets so I, yeah, yeah. it's just it's just weird but we were we we're lucky okay would you rather, so be, there, would you rather be good or lucky <laughs> yeah, boy, i'm not so lucky <laughs> does anybody have any questions for jim on a financial Okay, if not, we still don't see the people from the 250th, so we'll go to director's report. Okay, did everyone have a chance to look over my report? Does anyone have any questions on anything? Okay, so a few things have come up. Okay, I'm talking right now, okay? So a few things have come up since I sent out my director's report. At their last executive meeting, MBSC voted to continue the moratorium on minimum hours requirement to be eligible for state aid for the remainder of this fiscal year. Um, so, so that means that we don't have to worry if we're not open the maximum number of hours because um, they're because they're still allowing for COVID to um, that there might be reduced hours. And then we've been doing, Ashley and I have been, (laughs) Jack, can you please go into the other room or do that quietly so I can finish talking, please? Um, So Ashley and I have been doing a lot of cleaning during this time and we've gotten rid of a lot of old, manuals for items we don't have anymore. Um, We found an old wooden flagpole. What should we do with it? An old wooden one? An old wooden flagpole, like maybe it would have been one of the first flagpoles put out. It's long, it's not like a short one that we would use for the open flag, but more of a flagpole flagpole. This is well, sort of the same height. Maybe you should contact um, Neil and the Historical Society. Maybe they will. Maybe they can somehow date it or figure out what it is, and it might be something that they want to keep. Okay, and then I found the old drapes that were in the community room before we had the new drapes that are in there now put in. They were custom made to fit in those windows, so they're not going to fit anywhere else. Oh, Susan just came. Susan's waiting. Oh, here she is. So this is good because I'm almost finished. Um, they're not going to fit anywhere else because they were custom made for that room. Do we just say they're surplus and do whatever it is we're supposed to do with them? Do you think they're worth keeping? I really don't know. They've been sitting basically in a bag in the basement since they were taken down out of those windows. We're talking like five years ago. And this is for the basement room, right? That's right, the community room. They used to have um, a flower pattern to them. And then when Wendy was the director, they were replaced with the green yellow curtains that we have now hanging up in there. Are they the, they have a, a backer on them for the yes. sun? Yes. I don't know. If you think there's use or that we may want to, you know, use them again down there. I think during the movies that was handy, but I don't know if the ones Wendy bought have the same backing, like a blackout. I don't know. I don't know. All right, I will, I guess I'll just fold them up and store them better than how they're being stored right now. I'm sure they need cleaning. Yes. Uh, you know what? They're probably linen, aren't they? They're like a drape material. They could yeah, be linen. 
they would need to be dry cleaned. So you do what you want. My only thought was it may be worth it to keep, you know, for that particular special backing that was built into them. If you can, if you can find a way to store them better, if you need to buy some um, rubber tubs or something to put them in, if that would be better, um, I would do that. And then someone who knows more about drapes and curtains than I could assess and evaluate. All right. And Cindy, on the um, letter for the time capsule? Yes. Um, Bob, are you looking at that or reviewing it? Uh, I, I have not sent... really like to see I... it. Okay, I will get it typed up and send it out. Yeah, whenever you. you're you know ready with it, it would okay. be great. Cindy, just on your on your report, you say you have a rough draft of your letter to your predecessor. I think you mean successor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Probably okay. yes. Yeah, I did. That's just a a typo or something. Okay. Yes. Is there any, anything else you like to report? I've gotten some more library cards from Arizona. One's coming from Arizona, New York. I've gotten one from New Mexico, Alaska, oh. Ohio. Seriously? Seriously. We That's should pretty do awesome. A mural. Yeah. So I'm going to be creating a display of all the ones I have. Okay. Thank you. Cynthia, you're, you're muted. I was wondering about, um, and maybe this has already been brought up, about fines. I know we had suspended them during COVID, and I wasn't sure where things stood with regards to that for patrons. We haven't reinstated them yet. We are only, um, there is a report sent out today from CW Mars, and we are one of, in the 14% of libraries that are still charging fines. 73% of all CW Mars library members are now fine free. Like forever or? Like forever. The only, fine free in the fact that if you return the book, we'll forgive your fines. But if your book is lost and your account is blocked because it's showing a lost book, you either have to pay that or a lot of libraries will accept if you buy a replacement copy mm. to clean up your account. But just regular everyday finer curls, more and more libraries, especially since the pandemic started, have opted to go find free and they're actually finding that materials are being returned as opposed to before when they weren't because the patrons did owe fines and maybe they didn't have the money to pay those fines so but we are still as of right now we're still fine free and so that you say 14 percent was that including like is that now like after covid or was that like pre -COVID? that's that's now as of like march 1st got it um, that was a nice little source of income, but I'd rather be in keeping and forgive. Is that something we should revisit? Uh, we, we can revisit it, but it would have to go under new business. I don't we've have talked. any statistics tonight really to present, so maybe we can make it for, for next month so I have time to prepare some data. Even next fiscal year, I'm thinking. Okay. Just continue with the with the COVID um, fine free un until we figure this out in some other way. Does that meet with everyone's approval? No. Okay. Um, C Cindy, do you have anything else you wanted to? No, that's everything I have. Does anybody have any questions for Cindy on her report? All set. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to welcome Susan Barron and move her up uh, on the agenda so she doesn't have to sit through our, our meeting. Hi, Susan. Welcome back. <laughs> How can we help you this evening? I, um, I wanted to bring up the fact that the library has graciously offered to host 
the dedication of the gift, the town's gifts to the town on Monday, June 20th. Cindy and I have been talking about this. And I think Cindy has also been talking with um, the friends, <clears throat> excuse me, that, and Cindy can probably say more about what's in the works than I can, but we will have the granite bench, the design will be approved, hopefully at Mon our Monday, our next Monday, 250th meeting. Um, I tried getting in touch with Allison Bell today because she's the one who's been working on that panorama that I had talked about. And I don't know the status of that. I didn't hear back from her today. We were also talking about burying the time capsule. We're going back and forth on that because the time capsule is gonna be on library grounds. It made sense to do it at the event that's being held at the library. On the other hand, if we bury the time capsule at the beginning of the celebration week, are we limiting things that we might have wanted to put in it from late, from the celebration from later in the mm. week? So we're still, we may dedicate it even if we don't act, actually bury it. Um, we're just figuring that out. Cindy had the great idea of having what I'm gonna call a traveling display of the contents of the time capsule that would be on display at the library um, before the event and possibly at the Historical Society Museum. I'm gonna broach that with the 250th committee on Monday. Then the question had come up because the day before the celebration of the library is Juneteenth and the federal celebration is on the 20th, did we want to incorporate something at the, you know, at the event at the library? The other option is on the 19th itself, we're having the ecumenical service and I'm talking with the church, the people that are organizing it for multiple churches to see if it makes sense to incorporate it there. So I don't have an answer on that, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Cynthia, I don't know if you got a chance to talk with Susan. You're muted. You're muted. Hi, Susan. Um, I did some research in terms of things that do happen on Juneteenth, and I'd be happy to send you that list, but I don't have your email. Okay, that would be fantastic. Sure. <clears throat> my email is, my personal email is researchbaron. B A R O N at Gmail. And it's S U S A N? Yeah, yeah, but it, it's just research. It's not my name. It's the word research. Because your first profession. name isn't research. No. <laughs> so it's research baron. Great. Okay. I'll send you, I'll send you the list of some of the stuff that I came across and it's definitely, I'm not suggesting all of these things, but I, it's a, a nice mixture. And Bob Smith had, had considered maybe like one of the things was reading of the Emancipation Proclamation. And he wondered if a student could perhaps read that. Um, and so there's a whole, there's a, you know, the whole bunch of stuff that could, could um, happen, but we hope to do something okay, around great. that date. All right. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome. And thanks for reminding me about my mute. <laughs> Cindy, is there anything else you want to say about what's planned for the, the evening of the 20th? I know you've been working with, I think, Katie on that. Um, the friends are going to sponsor the difference between what the Bad News Jazz Band got for their Cultural Council grants so that they're going to get, um, they're going to, make up the difference for that. And that's pretty much the conversation that the friends and I have had around that day. Okay, so per perhaps I should join a meeting with you with them as well to talk about what, what we want to do. Okay, I can let you know when the next meeting will be. Great, perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Anybody Thanks. have any questions for me about the celebration or anything else? But no, great job though. Thank, Thank you, for, you coming. for sticking with it. Yeah, what I mean, what 
I kind of have a general idea of what the bench looks like, but it, at some point we'll, we see it before the celebration, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are three designs. Well, bear, bear with me. This is me trying to do technology, so it's kind of iffy. <laughs> um, Keith happened to send me three designs. Oh. If the host can enable screen sharing, I can show you what we're thinking of. I'd love to get your input. I'm not sure who's the host for this. Bob, How am I supposed to do VR settings? I'm under secure, uh, security settings. If you click on security settings. And you should be enabled. Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay, so let me start with, <gasps> this is where we started. Um, obviously it is not going to be for Officer Sean somebody. Uh, this is a sketch of what the design, this design, well, what a design would be. So this side of it will have the Waitley 250 logo, 1771 to 2021. And a, probably across the back is going to be our motto, the one and only wait. So we started with this design, which is made of Vermont granite. And then someone raised the question of, can we do something with local stone? There really is not good stone in Waitley for this type of thing. So we have been exploring Goshen and Ashfield stone. And these are two samples. I'm assuming we can get this one without the snow on it. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. So whether we want the more rustic and what I'm gonna call thinner stone, and I cannot, I we would need Keith to tell us what the kinds of stone are. Um, that <clears throat> versus the more polished granite. I can't promise that we can do what you say, but I'd love to hear your preferences because I can present that at the meeting on Monday. Much as I love um, and know Goshen Stone, I, I like the one you have on the screen now. I like that yeah. one too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, when I, the one thing that I thought of possibly with the Goshen is I wonder, is it more open to vandalism? You know, because it's not quite as, I mean, it's obviously sturdy, but I just didn't know if it'd be something if somebody jumped on it or mm. played with it in a very harsh way. I don't, I mean, it's stone. I'm guessing it's pretty rigorous, but I just didn't know. Yeah, it, it, it is, and I'm just going by the pictures. Keith's been having all these conversations, not me. It is thinner. I've been told that it, <clears throat> excuse me, that it should last for hundreds of years. Okay. But it's a thinner stone, and that's a good point. I mean, if somebody wanted to do damage, could they break through that versus, I don't know that anybody can get through that. Right. So I mean, it's a horrible way. It's a horrible way to think about this world. Um, mm. But it's a reality. I hate to say it, but it's a reality. Susan, the, the Goshen stone looks more to me like a gravestone. <laughs> Just, it seems sort of, <laughs> sort of like a gravestone. I think well, the marble that's looks like a. Because the reason we looked at Goshen was we had people who thought that the other looked very funereal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing both of yes, these. Thanks. I will share your, I'm just trying to figure out how to get back. To and Jim, idea. what is that the veterans? I'd have to, I can't, I'm thinking off the top of my head, but. Veterans it, has the gra has granite, but without. Yeah, I wondered if that would kind of coincide better, just like give some kind of continuity if you're walking through town, like I often do. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. That it is, it's. Not the same, but it's more consistent with. Yeah. 
That's a really good point. I will raise all of this with the crew on Monday. I'm so glad your meeting came first. I felt bad because with your meeting first, I don't have a lot of information because I need to talk to them about other stuff, but this is helpful. Yeah. Um, Thanks for your time. I would be interested in hearing what you would, you know, what you end up doing if you decide to do something on the ninth, the actual 19th with the churches or something instead, um, just so that way, you know, we aren't trying to plan also something on the 20th that you may already be doing on the 19th or something like that, you know? Yep. I can, I can, um, not that you would allow that to like happen, but, <laughs> but still we don't want people spinning their wheels. Um, once I have resolution on that, I can at least get in touch with Cindy. I think I have emails for Cindy and probably Bob. If I can share it with the two of you sure. and then you disseminate it to the group. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Um, I can do that after Mon after Monday's meeting. Anything else I can tell you? We're really excited. Plans are coming together. This has been way too long in the making. Um, but we're getting there. Great. Great. And may you get your voice back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Have a good night, okay. everybody. All right, and we will swing back to um, uh, old business, the update of the lift project. Bob Klinger, do you want to take that? I'm happy to take it. So things have been rolling forward. Um, after the last meeting, there were concerns about dust. Um, I was down there. I actually bought some plastic to put up, it talked with... Cindy talked with Sheila, talked with Cynthia about how best to do this. I don't know the best answer. Obviously, I haven't put anything up because there's nothing up. Um, I'm not sure how to secure plastic sheathing and allow easy access through to the two wings. And that concern, it, it, I, I don't know what to do. I, I met Cynthia down there. Um, dust is obviously a concern. It still is dusty, um, about the same level, in my opinion, about the same level as it was a week ago or so. Um, so um, I'm not quite sure what to do. Work is continuing. They have now sheetrocked out the, so the, the large enclosure on the first floor, uh, the wood enclosure has been replaced with a sheetrock enclosure. And in the basement, they're framing it out. Um, they've done some sheetrock against the back wall. They've done the reinforcements in, from what I can tell, the reinforcements into the terracotta four by four tiles so that they can mount the lift infrastructure. So the, the framing, um, they have cut one of the Bethlehem steel trusses and they're slowly cribbing and reinforce, not slowly, they're reinforcing and cribbing so they can cut the other trusses, um, doing some initial wiring, things like that. So work is progressing, things are moving forward. Um, there's some answers, but there's others that we don't have answers to. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to make it to Thursday's meeting. I talked with Jim. Um, Jim, you had mentioned that you and Bob will be there for the meeting. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately I need to be in Boston on Thursday, so. I, I don't, yeah. Go ahead. Cindy, how are you and Ashley doing so far with that? We're surviving. We're cleaning when we can. The only, um, they haven't listened to us. So perhaps someone would be willing to remind them that we are a public building. And sometimes small children do come in to use our facility and language sometimes could be better. Uh, we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up at the construction meeting. 
Okay. Right, just and because then, both Ashley and I have spoken to them, and it seems as though it's not being heard. Cindy, do you want to? Cindy, do you want to bring up the issue from today? Oh, the fact that we had no water and we weren't. Yeah. There was a communication error. We did not know the plumbers were coming today, despite the fact that both Ashley and I were there all day yesterday until I got to work this morning and was told that they were working on the plumbing and we had no water for most of the day. And thankfully our neighbor, Regina Labella, who lives right next door to us has offered Ashley and I the use of her bathroom in the event of an emergency. Well, we will also bring that up on because that's that's a simple matter that should never have happened. We should have known that. Um, we'll take care of that on Thursday, when the when all of the principals are there. Right. I mean, it was a communication error. Yep. But we survived. We're surviving. Okay. Good. Good. And so, no, has there been any recent change stuff? Just change order nothing recently nope. we're, we're still we're still waiting uh for thursday's meeting to find out what the cost is on the bump out and uh it it looks as though the bump out is not going to be as severe a thing as we thought it was um but we'll let you know um but so far we haven't heard anything more about fire systems and we haven't heard anything more about the bump out and we haven't gotten any other Changers. Jim, I should mention that we got a bill from the architects today for 800 and something dollars, which Cindy has um, put in for payment. That's okay. just a typical, a typical bill. I forgot to mention that before. Okay. So there is no news on change orders. I can't imagine why it's taken this long for them to come up with the change order for the bump out, but it has. Well, I mean, in the one way, they're not going back where we thought it Correct. was, but which would have been as much work. They're coming forward. Yep. So hopefully it will be minimal. Yep. Yep. And um, I guess that that uh, swings right into the discussion of the current state of operations during construction, because Cindy just informed us about that. So does anybody have any further questions for Bob or Jim or for Cindy in terms of operations? I mean, so go ahead, Megan. Oh, no, I was just going to go back to like the dust <laughs> thing. I mean, is there going to, do we think there's going to be more, like just more kind of cutting into things and more dust generated? I guess I don't know. And what efforts, you know, I know you bought the plastic, but like I wasn't sure if there were ways to open windows and stick fans in it and kind of try to push, you know, dust and materials just out. Um, or things like that, I guess. I don't know if, is it resolved about what we're doing with it or are we just gonna sit tight and then hopefully use this five to do a deep cleaning? At this point, the, the demolition is, is, is done. They're not doing any more demolition and that's, um, that's that dust they get from cutting concrete. So that's, that's behind us. So I don't anticipate it getting any worse. Okay. And I think we're probably just gonna do our best to um, surface clean for now and then wait for some deep cleaning once the job is done to clean the whole place right up. When Ashley and I have time, we have been swiffering when, you know, going in and swiffering where we can. So those have helped some. Okay. So I spoke with my sister who her degree is in book and paper conservancy. She has a library of science degree in her focus is protecting collections. And she, what she said was every ounce of protection and prevention that you can do benefits everybody, the, the collection, the people, everybody. So yeah, we can keep going forward. But just because they're done with the demolition doesn't mean that there's not going to be more created in construction in terms of cutting drywall and, you know, like all those, we're still going to be dealing with more stuff. So, um, and when I, when I was there with uh, Bob Klinger, you know, we had been told that the new floor in the Duda room 
community room downstairs was going to be totally covered so that there was not going to be any, you know, we wouldn't have any problems with this brand new floor that we had installed. And there was a small, you know, small area covered. And then they had metal pieces on other parts of the floor that had nothing underneath them. So I'm not seeing that I'm not seeing that what we had been told would happen is happening. I'm definitely seeing that there's been an impact to our collection and you know, hope hopefully it, it is just on the physical building, but the idea that we're just gonna let it all keep flying does not sit well with me. I, I don't think that that is the way to move forward. I don't think it's in our library best interest. Well, I think um, if we need to do some cleanings before the giant deep cleaning at the end, I mean, I guess I kind of expected that we would need to, um, not the thorough one that's expected and, and wanted at the end, but I mean, some of the surface cleaning, yeah. I did look and I mean, if they plastic up the wings, there is A, no airflow, and B, um, that is some beautiful molding and woodwork in there. And I don't see taping it, tacking it, nailing it to put that up. It would create, it, there would still be some dust and there's going to be some dust because it's construction. So I think as far as, you know, keeping the staff safe, that's gonna be up to Cindy if she feels she needs, you know, a more thorough than surface cleaning. And the collection kind of has to be done. It has to be done from the surface. So I suggested if the vacuum cleaner has a brush attachment that show it Matt how to use it. It has know, to be a HEPA filter minimize. vacuum. We, do we have a HEPA filter vacuum? I don't know what we have, honestly. It's a, it's a Dyson. That's all I know is it's a Dyson. Yeah, unless you have a HEPA filter vacuum, any regular vacuum is just going to be spreading it even more. So like, I guess we have to be, we have, there, there's tools out there that are meant to address this type of situation. And there's preventative mes measures which have not been taken. And I, I'm going to be the voice of, I think that we have done a poor job. And to hear that we're just going to wait till the end does not sit well. So I, I think we are doing our library a disservice. I think we are doing. But do we just close it down? That doesn't seem to be what our director. There, there's other for. options besides, I'm not saying to close it down, Sheila. Did I say that? I didn't say that. Uh, I'm saying that there's other things that we could be doing. If you're going to talk about vacuuming, then we have to have the proper equipment. If we're going to talk mm -hmm. about, you know, preventative, preventative is what is the recommendation by the people in this industry. And preventative is plastic. So it's not a, you know, the plastic is more important in preventing than having air circulation during the process. So, you know, uh, I don't understand. I don't quite understand the reasoning of going against procedures that are in play, that are known within this, within libraries. Because that's what we're doing. We're going against recommendations of construction and library buildings. So, but that seems to be where everybody's leaning. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, you you say that though, but I feel like at least I don't have any information on what that looks like or what preventative measures look like in library buildings. Um, Preventative measures means that that the collection should have that we shouldn't have left anything in the rotunda. It should have been moved out to the outer to the two wings 
and it should and there should have been barriers put in place. Well, it, putting barriers up it, it affects the the flow of air for heat. It's still the heating season, and the way our system is designed, it needs continual airflow between and among all of the rooms. So you can't close off a room. Okay, you're going to end up with frozen pipes. So that's that's what we're faced with. We have to keep the air circulation moving throughout the building to keep it warm. Then, then and we're then, also circulating just dust everywhere then too, right? I mean, yep. so that's then in everything. So then the, the other option, Jim, is that you cover the shelves. You, you, you cover the shelves and it would have to be something that would be on when there's nobody except for the workmen there and then um, off when there's op it, we're open for patrons. Those, uh, there's options. What I'm saying is we've done zero or not zero because there was some effort downstairs, but the ceiling, the, you know, the downstairs taping has come undone in places. So we're still, there's still dust getting in those, in that part of the collection. So we there we didn't do our we in my opinion we did not do well enough. How should we proceed? I kind of agree that maybe within the rotunda, because that's where I, I was in today. I did see dust like on the lamps and tables. Um, yeah, is, we probably is should have tarped or covered that stuff, but it still would have meant, you know, vacuuming, brushing, feather dusting. You can't um, do, so Sheila, you, so you, you actually, there's only one way to clean it off and that is a vacuum with a HEPA filter. You can't do all those other things, but there's, you know, I just moved every single book in the stack room within the last 12 months. Yeah. There is so much empty shelf space in there that I bet 85, if not 90% of what's in the rotunda could have been moved to empty shelves. It's not like we would have had to displace one single thing. So. So, I mean, is that what we should do going forward? Try to move at least the collection out of the rotunda over? Where a lot of the work is happening? What? Where a lot of the work is happening. What do you? The work is happening in the rotunda area. Like right, so move a, the collection out of the rotunda. You know, obviously leave surfaces and things like that that are easier to wipe down than the books. Um, and then is it, I guess I don't know, you know, yeah, is it possible to like tarp at least the stacks and things like that when, you know, the library is closed? And then you have to like, the problem is to then untarping it and having yeah. like trying to then what, put them outside or something because those are then covered with dust. So you have to be careful about moving them. Right. Ask again, if we're going to do something, someone needs to move that we do it, and then we have to figure out how to do it and who's going to do it. I mean, I, I don't know what the answer to that is. This is what I struggled with. There must be, a, there must be a cleaning, cleaning companies that have or rent uh, HEPA filtered vacuums. I mean, I can bring my shop vac. I have multiple shop vacs with, you know, have the filters and things like that. Um, we could start there. Yeah. Right. I have I have HEPA filtered vacuums. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Start there, and then. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked what kind the library had because my vacuums also HEPA filtered. I don't know if the library. I don't. I don't know what Matt 
I don't even know where Matt's stuff is. So um, I don't think Matt knows where his stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. We are in a public meeting. Um, we should therefore at least do that. And perhaps, Sheila, we could purchase some um, thin plastic to throw over them, over all of the um, I, units I after a, we've cleaned. I have a bunch of four mil plastic. I'm happy to yeah. drop it off. I'm happy to donate it to the cause. Okay. And at Thanks, least that would um, be a start. Yeah, um, I mean, and I can come in this weekend and move books if that's what we want to do. Um, I just, right. Well, we would until, just uh, until we vacuum, until yeah. we vacuum the area, moving them just brings more into the wherever we're moving them to. I think. Yeah. Because we should start right. with with a with a HEPA vacuuming. And I have also recommended to both Cindy and Ashley that they wear um, uh, N95, N95 masks when they're working. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I don't know. Um, I told them that. I told you that, Cindy, like two Saturdays ago. Um, I have well, it, one. Is that a is that a, a an option? I can. I, I'm not opposed to cleaning at all. I mean, I'm the director, it's my library. I can help do the cleaning. I can check tomorrow to find out. I know it's a Dyson. I don't, I can check tomorrow to see if it's a HEPA filter vacuum. I know where the brush attachments are. And it's just a matter of working with staff and showing them this is how to, to do this. And Bob, you said you, Bob, you said you had HEPA vac? Yeah, like Megan, I have a shop vac and I put a HEPA filter in it. Um, so is it possible for you to drop that off at the library and happy to drop it off tomorrow or whenever? Okay. okay. Yeah. And All right. then if we do tarp what's there, well, do we tarp them or move them? Because if they just plastic what's in the rotunda, as Megan said, now you're you know, kind of pulling that off and trying to fold it and haul it out. So we clean, then move. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> so do we have a moving party? I can move. I can come and move stuff. Like I said, I maybe I can work with Cindy to find out what the best. Um... And, and I'm around. I mean, I'm happy to help too. So, yeah. All right. Just so that I'm not moving things and they're like, where is this book now? <laughs> Cindy, what exactly. do you that was, think? Yeah. Do you want to do some cleaning in the rotunda and leave in place with plastic? Do you want to clean the rotunda and then move to your side wings? What do you think? Well, I have been wanting to do some rearranging of things. So maybe we we'll start with cleaning the rotunda and then moving the things that I wanted to shove into the adult room. We start with moving those things and then go from there. Okay. Okay, it's a start. Yeah. And again, if you do need, you know, more plastic or what have you, um, let us know. Okay. Well, and I'll drop under, off. Under. So today is Tuesday. Um, tomorrow I will drop off a box that has four mil plastic in it. Um, a big roll that you can unfurl and do whatever you need. Um, and I'll also drop off a shop vac with the help of filter. Yeah. Thank you. We can also consider, yeah, like painters tape and stuff like that if we're worried about woodwork. Mm -hmm hanging things up or anything like that. I I have some of that. I can drop that off. Um, I have blue painters tape. I have the green auto tape. I can drop that off. It seems to stick a little better. Um, the concern I had around the, the entrances to either wing is the people going in and out. Yeah. People going through. I mean, I even bought zippers for if you 
if you get it all placed and then you slice it with an exacto knife and put a zipper in and um the the concern i have is after about two or three entries yeah i think it's just going to fall and any i mean any, yeah. i was i was trying to come up with some way that you could that you could fold the plastic over a two by six and then support it on the sides and keep it upright. But then the, the more you put up above somebody's head, yeah. if that isn't nailed in place and people are moving through and it moves and it slides and it falls, then it's an even bigger deal. Right. It, it, can we agree to start with the vacuuming sure the plastic and the moving of some of the books and then stand there and look and say okay what else can we do and how can we do it so that at least we're proceeding um, okay what we can yeah all right i'll drop off the plastic and the vacuum tomorrow cindy hide the stuff so that it doesn't get swept up by the um uh, okay. contractors as if, if they think it's theirs. I'll write my name on it. How's that? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll stick it in the closet in the office if it okay. will fit. Cindy, right. you also can get free um, N95 masks at CVS. Okay. I can you also can... drop some off at the library if you need N95s. Yes. Perfect. Good. All right. I mean, I have, I my niece gave me a couple and I've been using those, so but any extras certainly would help. Thank you. Yeah. So if you go to CVS and say there's three people in my household, um, they're going to give you three bags of three N95 masks each. Um, and that's what the government's giving those out at this point. Is there any further discussion? We have a plan of action. It's going to start tomorrow. Cindy, I'll be in touch. Um, any other old business? Okay, we move to new business where we've already talked about the 250th committee. The only other piece of new business I had was it's time for the annual review of the director. And she has a paper copy of the evaluation form available for each of you in her office at the library. I appreciate the paper forms because when I do the final one, I just lay them all page by page, side by side. And I can um, then write my narrative before um, Cindy and I have our meeting. So if you don't mind doing paper one more time, um, and then you can simply re you can simply put them in a, um, an envelope and return them uh, to Cindy's office, and then I will open them. And um, I'll as soon as I know, just give me an email that you or a text that you've brought them back, and then I'll collect them and. Um, We'll do our evaluation. Cynthia? When do you need them back by? Uh, Cindy, do we normally do this like in April, right? Yes. So let's say by the April meeting, which would be the second Tuesday in April, which is April 12th. Um, if you could get them back to me before then, and then uh, Cindy and I, and probably Sheila or anybody, um, Sheila, you've been to evaluation meetings before. Maybe we could do it again one more year. Be happy to. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, is there any other new business? Um, one thing I was just going to mention, um, just something for you to consider, Cindy. Um, I've noticed I think there is at least one library on the Nextdoor app. Um, I saw it and I was like, oh, maybe I should mention this. So just something to consider Next. social media wise. <laughs> next door app yeah it's a neighborhood sort of app and like i said i've noticed that there are a couple libraries in the area that are on it so. all right i will write that down so i can look at it tomorrow i'm not saying we have to it was just something that we could consider mm -hmm. I, i'm i'll write it down so i can look at it I, I can tomorrow. i can look to and see what specific libraries if it is if i can find it again so Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I will second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed.
Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.